set them free. Praise the Lord, I'm free. I'm no longer bound. There's no more chains holding me. And my soul is resting. And it's such a blessing to praise the Lord. Hallelujah, I'm free. Freedom said it sounds good and it sounds nice. Got to be free. Greetings to all of you. My name is Private William Riley Salisbury Webb. I'm the 29th Connecticut Volunteers and I fought in the Civil War. Now that old song that you heard me come in on was what our fight was all about. An opportunity and a chance at freedom. When I think back into the time of enlistment, I can hear Sergeant Alexander Newton saying, I enlist under this conflict until the clanking of slave chains shall be heard no more. Listen. There's no more clanking. There's no more slave chains. Said, I'm free. Praise the Lord. I'm free. Freedom. Said it sounds good and it sounds nice. Got to be free. Now, before I begin to tell you our story, I always like to stop and give thanks and honor to all of those who fought and died for our freedom. I think back to the year 1828. There was a young slave by the name of Nat Turner who desired to be free. All Nat could ever think about was one day being free. So he had this vision. And then this vision said that if slavery was going to be abolished, somebody had to die. Blood had to be shed. So Nat Turner gathered 59 men and one woman, and they tried to overthrow slavery itself. But he was later captured, and he was hung. Then in 1859, a white gentleman from Torrington, Connecticut, a Mr. John Brown, took up the same vision that Nat had. And John Brown tried to overthrow slavery. But he was also captured, and he was hung. In 1863, President Abraham Lincoln signed the Emancipation Proclamation and blacks everywhere were set free. I say to you again, freedom said it sounds good and it sounds nice. Got to be free. Now I was born in the year 1834. My mother's name was Eloisa Johnson and my dad I did not know. But I always wondered who dad was. Was dad a tall man? Was he strong or friendly or kind? But I never had an opportunity to meet him. But in 1840, my mother, she met and she married a Mr. Edward Salisbury of Ellington, Connecticut. Now, Mr. Salisbury was a good man. He owned a lot of land and he taught me all those things a young man needed to know. He taught me respect and honor and how to work with my hands. You see, he was everything to me. He was my friend. He was my big brother. Thanks, Dad. But in 1855, I disappointed Dad. I committed a crime, and I was sent to the Wethersfield State Prison, where I spent four years of my life. That old song you just heard me sing about freedom, I just gave it all back. But during that time, it was rumored that war was getting ready to start in our country. 1861, war started, the North versus the South. Now blacks weren't allowed to fight that until 1862 when Congress passed an act allowing for the enlistment of colored soldiers. Then in 1863, the War Department established the Bureau of Colored Soldiers. Now there was nearly 200,000 black soldiers that fought in the Civil War. Comprised of 160 artillery, infantry, engineer, and cavalry units. There was at least 100 black officers. But you see, I wasn't an officer. I was just a private. But we served with this gentleman from Middletown, Sergeant Alfred Powers, who stood about six foot four, 225 pounds. And Sergeant Powers was a big man. And we would sit around our encampment and we would play cards and we would drink our coffee and eat our hardtack. And then Sergeant Powers would come onto the scene and all the soldiers start going, pick up Sergeant Powers, pick up Sergeant Powers. See, seeing Sergeant Powers gave us that sense of hope that if a black man could be an officer in the United States Army at that time, then anything was possible with freedom. Anything you wanted to be 
you could be with freedom. Hello, Mr. President. Hello, lawyer. Anything you wanted to be, you could be with freedom. But this also reminds me of what the great abolitionist Frederick Douglass said to our men before we marched in the war. Frederick Douglass said, once let the black man get upon his person, the brass letters U.S., and an eagle on his button, and a musket on his shoulder, and bullets in his pocket, there is no power on earth that can deny that the black man has not earned the right to be a citizen in the United States. Freedom. Said it sounds good, and it sounds nice. Got to be free. Now, during all that time, I remember it's 1863, and it's August, and it's hot, and the cries come through the streets of Hartford, Black man, free man of Hartford, and live for the war! Nearly 1,500 soldiers enlisted. I enlisted on December 22nd of 1863, but our regiment was not much into the United States Army until March 8th of 1864. Now the reason for the delay was the Confederate Army put out a threat saying that if any white officer lead a group of colored soldiers, we were going to torture you. So no white officer wanted to lead our men. But oh praise and thanks be to God to Colonel William Wooster, who was formerly of the 20th. You see, Colonel Wooster was brave and he led our men into the war. But before we marched into war, a great day occurred in my life. On March 12th of 1864, myself and a number of soldiers got married. And I married my beautiful bride, Miss Augusta E. Madison. Woo As I think about that day. But then, we were off to war. It's April 19th, and we're down in New Haven, Connecticut. 29th, fall in line, sir. We look like men marching on, we look like men at war. We look like men marching on, we look like men going to war. Oh, what a feeling to look like a man. Somebody who was thought of as nothing but property. But now we were standing on the streets of New Haven, and we were looking. Like man. Hi, Mom. Cousin Elizabeth, Miss Sarah, Miss Alexine. Oh, it was our time to shine. It was our time to do our part in the Civil War. And we were off. We took the steamship, the Warrior, down to Annapolis, Maryland. Now, there in Maryland, we were ordered to build a fort and to set up camp. So, being good soldiers like we were, we began to dig and dig, and dig, and dig. And one soldier said, I don't listen to this war to work. I want to be free. Freedom! Said it sounds good and it sounds nice. Got to be free. But because we were U.S. owned, we had to work and build fort instead of camp. And we did. After that, we were ordered to go down to Hilton Head, South Carolina. Now they tell me through all of my time travel that Hilton Head is this great vacation place where people go and relax and enjoy life. But back then, war and battle was going on. Our first taste of battle came. Bermuda 100, Virginia. Now they said Bermuda 100, Virginia was the first place where the first 100 slaves entered into our country. So we wanted to go down and set the captives free. I remember that day. 29, fall in line, sir. William, Jonathan, Joseph. And we were all Bermuda 100, Virginia. I remember taking our post. We're waiting for the enemy. It was quiet. No sign of our enemy. Then the officer tells us to take our post, to take our formation. And he's coming. 
Here's the command. Fire! No! Fire! No! Fire! No! Fire! No! All night we fought. Fire! No! Fire! No! And the officer wrote back said that those men of the 29 fought brave and gallantly. Black men who were thought of as nothing, fighting brave and gallantly. I say to you again, freedom. Said it sounds good and it sounds nice. Got to be free. After that battle, the next day we held back a rebel's attack. Then we overtook Fort Harrison. Then we had to guard New Market Road, which was this important territory. So you guard a New Market Road, if we were to lose ground, we we're beginning to lose the war. But if we were to gain ground, we we're going to get closer and closer to Richmond. And we did well. Then, we were ordered to go down to Petersburg, the site of the big crater. But let me tell you how the crater come to be. You see, the crater is this big hole in the earth, you see. And what happened was the general who was in charge ordered the soldiers to dig this tunnel that was 500 yards long. Then he asked the man to dig another tunnel that's 75 feet long for plant explosives in the tunnel. So the soldiers once again began to dig and dig and dig and dig. Then the Confederate Army began to wonder, well, what are the Union soldiers up to? So all of their soldiers took formation. Our soldiers are digging this tunnel. What's that sound? What's that sound? Kaboom! And this big explosion, body parts was everywhere, the Confederate Army attacked. Fire alone! Fire alone! Fire alone! Fire alone! Over 2,000 soldiers. Gone. 2,000 soldiers, black men and white men. In a matter of moments, gone. I stop now and I honor all of those soldiers who fought and died for our freedom. Seeing that many men killed in one battle was hard. They told us at the time of enlistment that if we enlisted to fight in the war for freedom, we'll be free. And enlist to see my friend die. So I wanted with a chance at being free, but I want to see my friend die. I don't know if anybody ever lost a friend. I just want to be free. I want to see my friend die. But we had to gut it up though. We, we, we had to become men. We, we couldn't stay there. We, we had to become men. And we did. After that battle, we were ordered to go to the back to replenish and gather some more cartridges and to repair our clothes. But during this time, Sergeant Alexander Newton, who made the profound statement about enlisting until the clanking of slave chains were heard no more, he loved chicken. So being a soldier that loved chicken, he asked the number of us to go to the farm and gather up some chicken. So he had all these soldiers chasing chicken. But I understood why he wanted the chicken. Because they were serving you something called a heart attack. But I want you to listen close and just imagine eating something that sounds like this. Did you hear that? Could, could you imagine eating something that sounds like this? Oh, it was horrible. It, it was disgusting and they wanted us to eat that. But I understood why he wanted the chicken. I understood why he wanted all those good vegetables and mashed potatoes. I understood why. Not knowing if the next battle was going to be his last. 